Flies, by and large, are not very bright. They bump into windows and can't read or write. Apart from their lunches, their interests are few. They can't spell a word or add two and two. <coughs> but Philip the fly was nobody's fool, for he'd spent all last year on a wall in a school. He'd flown through this window. There, at a desk, sat, nose deep in a book, a large ginger cat. The cat taught him to read, and in no time at all, Philip discovered that learnings are born. He learned about history, German, biology, Latin, philosophy, Greek, and astrology. Soon he knew all about the Romans and Greeks, and could buzz about music, art, and antiques. His friends started wondering if he was ill. What use is your knowledge, they asked of young Phil. It won't help you find a great big pot of jam, a cake, or a donut, or a nice leg of ham. Philip just smiled and tapped a leg to his nose. It's bound to be useful one day, I suppose. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got things to do. I'm off to the library to learn something new. The library stood in an old part of town. It was ancient and crumbly, almost falling down. Phil flew to a window and there, to his glee, books stretched as far as his bug eyes could see. As young Philip studied a book about pies, he was watched from the corner by eight beady eyes, a whacking great spider called Slippery Seb, started busily spinning a Philip-sized web. When Phil finished reading the dusty old tome, he stretched out his wings to fly away home. But Seb had been clever. His web had been spun by the window through which Phil had recently come. As Phil flew to the window, a shock was in store. He got stuck in the web that was not there before. To Phil's screams for help came the spider's reply, there's nothing as tasty for lunch as a fly. Phil was quite worried. He was in a plight. It looked like he wouldn't be back home that night. As Seb fetched a napkin, a knife, and a fork, Phil had an idea. He started to talk. He spoke about poetry, science, and art, of nature and history. He was terribly smart. He told Seb of equations. They're awfully hard. Of Shakespeare and chemistry and how to make lard. Hour upon hour, Phil continued to spout interesting stuff until Seb was tired out. Phil wriggled and squiggled. Then, to his great glee, the web snapped, and suddenly, Philip was free. At last, he got home with his story to tell. And now, all his friends are learning as well. And what of the spider? He'd learnt a lot, too. He's now a professor of maths in Peru. Felicia the Hummingbird was late once again. I promised to visit with Molly the Wren. What time is it now? 2.30. Oh, no. I told her I'd be there an hour ago. She zoomed between bushes. She whizzed past the trees. She outran the squirrels and out buzzed the bees. Felicia flew up to her friend's little nest, where Molly sat calmly awaiting her guest. Felicia said, Sorry, so sorry I'm late. One thirty. I know we'd made it a date. But do you think we might change it to a quarter to five? I've a meeting right now with a hamster called Clive. Felicia gave Molly a peck on the cheek. And then off she flew before Molly could speak. She whizzed off to Clive, skimming over the river. And there he sat waiting with some cookies to give her. He started to greet her, but quickly she stopped him. She turned round and said, Clive, 
I know I've just dropped in, but sorry, got to run. I've forgotten the chore. I'll be back in ten minutes, and we'll visit some more. Felicia the Hummingbird, as you can see, packed more into one day than the busiest bee. Though kind and considerate and very good-hearted, she'd never once finished whatever she'd started. There were more friends to visit, more places to go. She'd not seen a sunset. They happened too slow. Now, as she was nearing her grandmother's tree, Felicia asked, didn't Grandma want something from me? I'm sure Grandma asked me this morning to bring, to bring her uh, something. But what was that thing? What was it she asked for? What could it have been? And I told her I'd bring it by 317. She remembered too late the big tree up ahead. She couldn't avoid it and hit it instead. Unhurt but quite dizzy, she lay on the ground. It forced her to stop. And you know what she found? A snail, small and round, creeping so slowly past her. Felicia said, hey, can't you go any faster? The snail said, why hurry? A slow life sublime. It's better to savor one thing at a time. Today, cross the path. Tomorrow, enjoy a lovely long visit with my brother's new boy. Felicia thought as she lay by the tree, his life seems so happy, but he does less than me. Well, then she tried it. Felicia the hummingbird stopped, and in that small moment, a little thought dropped. Nectar, sweet nectar, that's what Grandma requested. I remembered as soon as I stopped and I rested. She turned to her new friend, the snail so slow, and said to him, thank you. You've taught me, you know. From now on, no speeding, no frantic forgetting. I might even stop to enjoy the sun setting. And that very day, that's just what she did. She sat with her grandma as the sun slowly hid. They sighed and they talked as the daylight grew frail. And then someone joined them, the leisurely snail. They all sat together in grandmother's nest and sipped nectar slowly as that way was best. <laughs>